those examples were very easy because the wind speed was uh, uh, in the, on the same axis as the air speed. But what if they're not on the same axis? And that's when we have to do special vector addition. Um, again, we're, it doesn't matter which one we add first, just like we mentioned at the end of the last slide. You can add the first one to the second one or the second one to the first one as long as you put them head to tail. Then, you, then uh, what we get when we add them up, the blue thing that I was showing on the previous slide, the blue vector, which was the sum, that's called the resultant of the vectors. Okay. So what we want to do is see, well, if we put these head to tail, and we, we happen to have put, in this case, wind speed ahead of air speed, uh, you know, we want to find out what is that actual uh, speed relative to the ground. This, this blue vector again is our resultant, the sum of the vectors. And notice it's not as much as 99, and it's not as little as 9 in magnitude. It's somewhere in between. The maximum it could have been would have been 99 if, they'd, if, the, if the yellow arrow and the red arrow had been perfectly aligned on the same axis. The minimum it could have been would have been uh, negative 9 if they were aligned along the other axis. Okay, so um, along the same axis but in the opposite direction is what I meant there. All right, so you can see how you would do this with graph paper, you know, but we're not going to, we're trying to avoid using graph paper. So uh, we use trig, and you've probably learned these little trig identities. Hopefully you know the little uh, mnemonic, so, ka, toa, and notice how it works. The S, the O, and the H, the C, the A, and the H, the T, the O, and the H have to do with particular things. The first letter is always the trig function of the angle. So sine of the angle or cosine of the angle or tangent of the angle. And then the next letter is what's on the numerator in the numerator of a fraction. And the third letter is what's in the denominator of the fraction. That's what this Sokotoa tells us. And these uh, numerators are all lengths of sides. And these denominators are also lengths of sides. So I'll just remind you what the types of sides are. Okay, there, notice we've drawn our angle in, and it's important where we drew our angle. We put it uh, in one corner of a, of a right triangle. This, this stuff works for right triangles. Okay, we put it in one corner of a, of a right triangle, and it connects from the longest side, the hypotenuse, to what we call the adjacent side, which is what's right next to it. Adjacent means next to it, or by the side of. Okay, now this. The other side that we haven't named yet, the opposite side, is called the opposite side because it's opposite of the corner where the angle was labeled. All right. So again, these are the we've got the sine of the angle equals the length of the opposite side over the hypotenuse length. The cosine of the angle equals the length of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse length. And the tangent of the angle uh, equals the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. All right. So for any vector, we can we can uh, define its uh, components. We'll define its. Uh, let's say our vector was a. We can find a horizontal component of it and a vertical component of it. And notice I like to draw my angle so that my adjacent side is in the horizontal. By the way. Uh, that's why I'm saying AX here and AY there. Okay, my my horizontal side should have AX. So it's the horizontal component of A, and this this teal colored one is the vertical component of A. And I want you to realize that you know if this was a vector for displacement, this white one for example, let's say it was five meters there, I could get to the same position by by walking four meters to the right and three meters up and I'd end up at five meters over at the right ang at the correct angle. Uh, so this vector sum, the, the red plus the teal, uh, that vector sum is equal to the hypotenuse length here on this triangle, this vector diagram. All right, and notice that these little items in the slide represent just rearrangements of the so kato. Here's sine of the theta is supposed to equal the uh, the opposite side over the hypotenuse, but we've we've multiplied both sides by the hypotenuse to find out what is the length of the opposite side. And over here the trig function says cosine of theta should be the length of the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, but we've multiplied through both sides by the hypotenuse. And so here's how we find when we multiply the cosine of the angle times the uh, 
hypotenuse length will get the length of the adjacent side. All right, now remember uh, in my class usually unless we otherwise specify you should probably have your calculator set to um, degrees rather than radians mode. I think in your math class you'll probably be doing radians and we'll, in our class we'll try to specify if we ever switch over to radians. Okay, now notice if we have two different vectors and uh, we can find their horizontal components, their x components, we can line them up because they're, the, they're on the same axis and they will add whether they're uh, both the same sign or not, they will add. Okay. They, we, we add them up with whatever signs they come with to find out what is the overall uh, horizontal component and likewise we do this for the vertical for the y direction. We find the y component of the of both vectors and, and then we add up the two vertical components of both vectors to find out the resultant vectors uh, y component. So we'll, we'll show you this graphically. Then we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out the actual length of the hypotenuse. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Um, we have our two original vectors that we want added together and we're not using graph, graph paper. So we'll bring the vertical components over from both of them and lay them on the y-axis. And we'll bring the horizontal components over from both of them and put them on the x-axis and then we've got um, the total overall vertical components and the total overall horizontal components of of the uh, resultant of what we should have found that blue vector and so here we go we when we bring those vertical components over to make them the opposite side uh, we will find our resultant vector without using graph paper we had to do that with the trig and then if we know these uh, sorry if we know the length of this side the horizontal side which will be the sum of these two and the length of this vertical side which would be the sum of these two we can do the the square of both of those and add them up and take the square root of it to find C using Pythagorean theorem we can also find the direction and we do that by uh, doing the inverse of tangent you know remember tangent of theta remember this tangent in our original trig function was tangent theta equals the uh, opposite which in our case is the vertical over the adjacent which in our case is the horizontal uh, component well, we, we needed the angle itself, not just the tangent of the angle. So to get rid of tangent, you take the inverse of it uh, on both sides. And so it turns out the measure of the angle, theta, is the inverse tangent of the uh, opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay, so in our case, it would be the sum of the vertical components, sorry, sum of the vertical components uh, divided by the sum of the uh, horizontal components, we'd take the that fraction and do the inverse tangent of it and that would get us our angle. This is our way, our method of solving um, vectors, vector diagrams when we don't have all the uh, two vectors lined up in the exact same, on the same axis and it saves us having to use uh, graph paper, straight edges, and uh, protractors. And we will use this many, many times, so you need to practice it. Try to get the concept down.